it. What Congress needs is a massive mobilisation of all members in a concerted alliance against Thatcherite Toryism. Sorry if I interrupted. Oh, no, 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 brother. I was just saying what Congress needs is a massive mobilisation of all members in a concerted alliance against Thatcherite Toryism. Yes, I suppose it does. Yes, this practical strategy represents a consensus of quite a few of us, you know. And such a view is compatible with a variety of ideological and theoretical positions. Oh, <laughs> we can hardly expect the hard secretarian left to concur. I uh, hardly know. <laughs> Scares me, brother Myers. <laughs> I've a feeling my seeds are falling on stony ground. Seeds? Recently, I've detected an increasing apathy and indifference to my inspiring political polemics. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, F.K. It wasn't indifference. It's just that I was trying to read this review of the cherry orchard. Oh. Well, <clears throat> I don't wish to denigrate market gardening, Oliver. <laughs> Thousands of our members cultivate allotments. My dear departed father enjoyed his piece of England's green and pleasant land. No, I'm not sure... As a you... release from the iniquitous and barbarous conditions of the asbestos factory. <laughs> <laughs> he is, in fact, credited as being the first man to grow a Jerusalem artichoke in Stoke-on-Trent. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Actually, I think he's the first man to be credited with growing anything in Stoke-on-Trent. Morning, Mom. Tea's up. What? No, I was just saying, brother, now seems the moment to set aside the divisions of the left and mobilise an alliance against Thatcher. Oh, God. What do you want to read that for? I like the arts page. Don't you know how dangerous it is to keep abreast of current affairs, world events and informed opinion, hey? No, 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 no. You stick with the sun, my son. Whatever starts World War Three, it won't be Samantha Fox's knockers. <laughs> she got me totally indifference. No one listens to a word I say. <laughs> What did he say? What? What did he say? Oh, I don't know. Wasn't listening. Mm, it was par for the course round here, innit? Oh, everyone listens to you, though. What? Oh, yeah, well, that's because I'm... Uh... Normal. No, 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 no. That's because I'm... Uh... Well, I've got everyone's interests at heart, haven't I? I've just been calming Green away down in the garden. Yeah. Found him in a highly excitable state, I did. Had a spot of inspiration in the night, he said. <laughs> Gonna build this life-size dummy and call it Albo. <laughs> then, when the Germans do a real call, <laughs> we stick the dummy in place of the POW who's escaped. <laughs> By the time Albert's been in the lineup for three days, the other chap's doing the movies in Geneva. <laughs> <laughs> actually, that's not such a silly idea. It did actually happen. Leave it out. No, it was a, a book and a film, Albert RN. I saw it on the box once. It did happen. Yeah, of course it did. I know that. And Greenaway obviously saw the film and it's lodged in his subconscious. <laughs> Just that he thinks he's come up with this blinding idea, that's all. Oh, it doesn't do him any harm. He just wants to get out like we all do. I think that's why FK's so twitchy. What? Probably. Well, at least Mrs. Mortensen lets you go out. Just down a cash and carry in the garden centre. She still lets you go. No, oh, I've got to go with me mum and be back in an hour. Cruel woman, Mrs. Moore. With one hand she giveth and the other she bollocks up my chances of a relationship with Tanya. Who's Tanya? Girl works down at Cash and Carry. Mm. Gorgeous she is. Oh, yeah. Mm. I tell you, Wally, they could review her bum in your aunt's page. <laughs> and we must room so much else, mind you. Unless you show any interest in you, I mean. There's been a certain amount of subtle, flirtatious byplay, yes. Sort of, um, winking and pouting. <laughs> Being as the lads don't get out much, yeah. I wouldn't do that if I was you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been over every detail. Foolproof. Oh, is this Albert, your dummy? You told him. You clear my pitch manners and I'll have you on the carpet for it. This is my plan and a wizard one at that. Yeah, you're welcome to it, mate. I don't want to spend my night stuffing straw into top coats and painting moustaches on turnips. Well, that's the sort of thing we do all the time for your blasted mail order catalogue. Once our chap is scot free, you can do what the hell you like with the bloody game. Until then, this is my wheeze. And just remember, loose lips sink ships. <laughs> Mr. Henderson, please. You are displaying disturbing symptoms of paranoia. Apathy and indifference around the mobilisation of our movement. And an overdose of rhetoric. Mrs. Mortensen, I take great pride in my oratorial expertise. I say this with due modesty. I was chowtered by no less a luminary than Graham Liversedge, <laughs> president of the Portvale Marxist and Potholing Society. Potholing? I did not realise that you were a potholer. <laughs> I think you did not list this under hobbies in your curriculum vitae. Honey, revelancy, Mrs. Mortensen. 
As a young woman, I spent many happy hours collecting fossils in Newfoundland. <laughs> Not as dangerous as potholing, of course, but... Shut up, but in the rest of them. I may as well have a tete or tete with a car booker. Please, Mr. Henderson, not a persecution complex also. It's my credibility I'm concerned with. Perhaps I'm having an identity crisis. That is what you had before you came here. That is what brought you to Briardine. You cannot have another one. You mean you'll charge me double? <laughs> Young Union Insurance will cover it, I assure you. <sighs> Mr. Henderson, please. There is nothing wrong with your motives. There is nothing unworthy about your commitment. When you say that there is a case for aligning the disparate voices of the left to form a cohesive body of opinion which condemns Thatcherism as a bourgeois social democracy, this makes for sound political strategy. That's all I'm trying to make the brothers realize, Mrs. Mortensen. Well, you're the expert. Give me a profound psychiatric analysis as to what I'm doing wrong. You are boring the ass off them. <laughs> Darling, I've done it. Then what, Miranda? Book the hotel in London. Oh, yes, your lower six thousand. Did the school book that for you? Of course they do, clothead. It's always the same gungy place in Earl's Court. It's full of travelling salesmen who smell of whiskey in the evenings and polo mints in the morning. <laughs> Sounds ghastly. I hope yours is nicer. It's only just round the corner from ours, and I've phoned them and you're booked. I told you, Miranda, I'm not coming to London. And I told you we never have a better chance to be together. And I told you it was too risky. My absence would be noticed. And I told you to have a word with the group captain. And I said it could do me harm medically. And I said if you didn't shop in London, I'd start paying more attention to that boy, Barry, who works at the garage and gives me these looks every day. Looks? Yes. You mean winking and pouting? Winking and pouting, yes. And half smiles, and leers, and a lot of. Miranda, <laughs> stop it! I could run away. Spurned by your indifference, I could end up on the streets of London, sleeping in bus stations and sniffing furniture restorers. Please don't talk like that. You're making me feel beastly. Sometimes it's kind to be cruel, Oliver. I phoned the hotel. You must write today, confirming for Thursday. Okay? Darling, it'll be ever so smashing. And when Miss Shinwell and the girls have gone to bed, I'll sneak out and pop over to you. And I'll be back in my hotel in the morning before we go off to some mouldy exhibition. At last, we'll be able to conjugate our love. <laughs> conjugate means something to do with verbs, Miranda. Oh, Oliver, I love it when you talk dirty. Ah, <laughs> <coughs> so... <coughs> oh, hello, Miranda. Uh, see my coat? By the wellies, I think. Uh -huh. oh. Yes, off down the shops for your mum. At least it's a trip out. Yeah, small mercies. Hey, you're off on a trip this week, right? Yes, this afternoon. School outing. Three dreary days in museums or exhibitions. Tomorrow it's a, a history of British embroidery or something equally important. Come here, Miranda. Mm. Nearly ready. Mark, now, where's my shopping list? Here it is. We are going down to cash and carry, I hope. Oh, I don't know as we need to today, son. Oh, Mother, I need to. The love of my life works there. Well, that girl that works in the yard, the one with a name like a fortune teller. Tanya? <laughs> Very sophisticated name, I thought. It's the only thing about her that is. She's got death tattooed right across her knuckles. Well, spelt right. <laughs> The old bat wants you to have a word with FK when we get back. She reckons he needs perking up. That means listening to a party of political broadcasts all night and be after the Labour Party, she can get someone else to do the perking. Oh, come on, son. You're the one that keeps their spirits up. I think you might have a gift for working with those less fortunate. They don't come less fortunate than myself, mother. <laughs> I'm on the run. I've got no money. And if we don't shift ourselves, I'm going to lose Tanya to that Lothario with the earring from the meatpacking department. <laughs> Quick, stay here. Uh, when you go into town, would you mind posting this to me? Yeah, sure. Uh, sorry. Oh. This. <laughs> don't forget. No, Sean. He don't write many letters, does he? As a rule, no. The Old Court Hotel. <laughs> uh, good captain. Um, I thought I'd better have a word with you. What? After all, you are the um, the um, the escape officer. Escape. Absolutely, Oliver. When would you like to leave? Oh, uh, Thursday. I'll only be gone one night, then. Hmm. Uh, um, a mission of some importance, I imagine. Well, yes. Well, no, that's all right. You don't have to tell me. No, but if I've, it's I mean... top secret, I don't have to know. But it's perfect. Please. No names. 
No petrol. Where are you off to? Oliver! He's not allowed to say. But you are my chums. Yes, I know that. But if we don't know anything, we can't crack and spill the beans if Jerry should turn the screws on us. As the writers are quite likely to do, as you well know. It's just that if Oliver was going to London, he can run an errand for me. Why what, my lord? You can call by my tailor and order me a decent suit. Albert! What? Just the chance we need to try out Albert. The problem of your leaving is bed check, right, Oliver? Mm, yes. Well, we stick the blighter in your bunk and Bob's your uncle. But you'd better be back damn smart Friday morning or there'll be a hell of a bloody row about it. I will. First train. Right. Everybody upstairs to the dorm. Let's get started. Come along, Earl. Come along what? We're going to build a dummy called Albert. What an absolutely ludicrous idea. It is not. It is a first-class idea, if I say so myself. And another thing. After this war is over, I intend to write a book about it. I wouldn't be at all surprised if it becomes a bestseller. Very likely a film, too. <laughs> Sorry, Mother. Raining again? It's raining in my heart. Mind your ass. <laughs> Hello, FK. You haven't seen Ollie anywhere, have you? Hey? Eh? Not speaking, eh? Well, can't say as I blame you. Listen, I'm, uh, I'm sorry about this morning, but, uh, well, you know, I'm like first thing, and uh, tea was cold and couldn't find the sun. <laughs> Still, no hard feelings, eh? <laughs> Discover the meaning of taste. A bowl of Kellogg's fruit and fibers, favorite. At breakfast time each day, it's simply exquisite. It's the crunchy whole wheat flakes that sort of you wide awake. But us, we're really nuts about the lovely fruit in it. It's more than crispy whole wheat flakes if you ask me. Kellogg's fruit and fibers, fruity too, just see. Apples, hazelnuts, bananas, raisins, coconuts, soft almonds. It's more than fruity, crunchy fruity. We agree. Anxious to remind her husband of a family christening, Mrs. Green of Billericay interrupts his meeting in Italy. <laughs> One of 162 countries you can now dial direct. Mr. Green, for whom loyalty to the family is very important, tells her he will shortly be leaving Naples in a great hurry. <laughs> Furthermore, he would never let business stand in the way of becoming a godfather. A reassuring three minutes for only one pound nine p. I hope he doesn't get held up. It's no big deal to dial direct. Home Styles spray paint. Less mess, more finesse. Tough, safe, versatile. Adds contrast, dries fast. Home Style resists rust, lasts for years. Home Styles spray paints. They'll give you ideas. Ed and Joe's car wash service. It's only five bucks. Great. Okay, Joey, we got 18 cars to clean. So let's grab a Budweiser. When you drink a beer that's strong yet smooth because it's matured over Beechwood, you can take your time. The beer's great, Ed. But what about the cars? <laughs> Joseph, we just went automatic. <laughs> Cripes, you've broken Albert. No mind about Albert. What about me? Crikey, I nearly died. I thought I'd be Eddie F.K. Hey, you thought this was F.K.? Yeah. He's supposed to be Oliver. Maybe it's the dressing gown. Well, maybe the shoulders are a little too broad. Well, well actually, you know, it's not that bad. Hmm. He's got no feet. Well, we're just making them up in the bathroom. 
I see. This is all in aid of your escape, is it? You told him? No. Did Earl tell you? No. Then we have a stoolie. Or a mole. We have a problem, that's what we have. Can I have a word with young Ollie here in private? Ha! A word? Or an interrogation? Oh, leave it out, Greenaway. Why don't you go in the bathroom and superglue Albert's head back on, eh? Go on, I'll be all right. Very well. Sit down, Ollie. Sit. What is it? This. We didn't post it. Not yet, no. But you read it. I didn't have to. Oh, I'm sorry, Mog. I was, I was going to tell you. Oh, yeah. And then I thought I really ought to do something on my own. It was about time I did for once. Do you want to go to London? Well, yes. But no. Well, she threatened all sorts of awful things if I didn't go. It's not that she's wicked, you understand. It's just that she still thinks that I'm a loony. She, she thinks she's doing it to help me get well. How? Well, she thinks that my problems might be purely sexual. Well, they're not. Hers might be, but yours <laughs> aren't. And let me tell you, Ollie, a night of illicit nookie in Earl's Court isn't going to do you any good. Don't made a world of good. <laughs> not you. I agree. I'll end up feeling mortifying guilt and probably get hiccups. Well, there you are, you see. This could set you right back to square one. No, no. You stay put. But what about Miranda? She'll have left by now. Oh, give her a bell? Mm, she'd be furious and hurt. Yeah. She'd probably do something reckless. She needs explaining to her gently. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Okay. Greenaway! What is it? <laughs> is, uh, is Albert Oliver yet? Will be, as soon as I've done wardrobe and nerves. Mm-hmm. Well, there's been a slight change of plan here, GC. I'm going to London. Make Albert mock. like Mog, if you ask me. Too damn quiet to be Mog, what? <laughs> oh, 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 yes, it's a pretty spitting like this. I think it's brilliant. And he'll be under the bedclothes with the lights off, and Mog will be back first thing. Quite. Yes, well, when you chaps are through with him, maybe my farm manager can use him as a scarecrow. What? <laughs> How dare you? He's destined for the Imperial War Museum. Really? Greenaway's going to write a book about him. <laughs> a book? <laughs> there it is, Do I... Blow the buttocks off your brother, Earl. <laughs> the reason I've been very low-key today, Brother Mog, is that I've been re-evaluating my role. I've not been reacting to your callous indifference to my political order. In pursuit of this, I've decided I need to address a bigger audience. I need to address a larger... <laughs> Constituency. So, I thought I'd come with you out tomorrow and convince the lady shoppers at Superside that only socialism can solve the problems of humanity. Now, for the tenor to the van. <laughs> oh, this is the word I bloody say. <laughs> Bit of a shock, eh? Well, come in. Where's Oliver? Um, he hasn't come, has he? He's lost his nerve, hasn't he, Mog? No, Why no, hasn't he turned up? Sit down and shush it a minute. But, Mog... No, sit. Um, his bottle didn't go. In fact, we had to tie him down. What? Yeah, me and the lads forcibly restrain him. So urgent was his desire to catch the 640 to your warm embrace. <laughs> well, it might have been the 715. But your embrace wouldn't have cooled off, would it? Of course it wouldn't. Why wouldn't you let him come, Mog? We love each other. Well, that is it, you see. That's it. It's because you love each other that I forbade it. Because if you love each other, then this isn't a way to go about it. I mean, you and Ollie have got something special, something precious. Not like me and Tanya. Tanya. Someone would suit this place very well. But it's the wrong time and the wrong place for you.